Uh, I'm AJ Manette from The Human Abstract, and this is Brutalitopia. Welcome, everybody. This is Mick again, back with my trusty friend, Jack, back in MIA, <laughs> but, but he's back. He's back in action now, and we are here today in Bloomington, <laughs> Illinois, in a very rustic setting right now, but we are here with AJ Minette from The Human Abstract. AJ, how's it going, bud? It's going well. We are about 24 days into the store. It's going really well. It's been a blast. Yeah, I was just going to say, we uh, we noticed there probably weren't that... Uh, five dates left but overall the tour has been good and everything crowds have been all right yeah the crowds have been uh have been rowdy and the shows have been packed and all the bands on the store are a blast to be with and it's cool every single band released an album this month so it's been really fun to yeah and with that, enjoy that with that um you guys of course came out i believe it was march 8th that uh digital veil was released and um, how do you guys feel the reception has been of it so far, both in the like the reviews of it and the live setting, how people have been responding to it? So far, it's been really good. It's been really nice to see that feedback. You know, when I released uh, the first album with the band Nocturne, nobody had known the band, so there wasn't that type of feedback right away. It took a while, and it was a slow build for people to actually start commenting on it. But with Digital Veil, we had this history, and you know before the record even comes out you have people kind of talking about it so that was a new experience for me but the feedback has been good uh, across the board and anytime there's some sort of review that is is might be negative in some way it's it's funny if if you read it and uh, you can get kind of get a sense for that person's uh, critiquing abilities and their credibility yeah, 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 as right, a reviewer right. and so that just so really is a critic like right right <laughs> you know yeah it's funny chuck klosterman said that uh music reviewers were, are the only people in the world who you know get paid to talk about their mail and that's pretty <laughs> much all it is they're mailed cds and the, oh, i'm gonna talk about this <laughs> yeah. yeah um the thing that's really cool about this tour, kind of changing gear a little bit, um, is how it really caters to young, A, young bands, well, Darkest Hour being the only exception, but young bands that have recently released material, especially this year. Um, how, how has it been? Like, I, th I feel, I think it's been that every band on this tour has released an album while on tour. Um, has, uh, what, yeah. what has been the reaction as far as, because I, I know all of you are playing newer material. Yeah, it's it's been really cool to have every band release something new because um, there's this sense of energy that you get when you release something new and you're able to play that stuff live and it kind of rejuvenates the band. So to have that energy from every band across the board right. makes the shows really exciting. Right, it's, like it's one here to think to hear praise for an album. It's another thing entirely to hear um, a crowd respond to new materials. I'm yeah, sure. absolutely. And on this tour, we're playing almost all new material. Right. Uh, it's just one of those things where, you know, again, it's a different lineup of people and perhaps a new identity for the band. And it's something that for me as a musician, I wanted to go out there and put what I think is our best material, um, absolutely. Yeah. out there. And, you know, it's something that we all obviously agreed on because we're out here playing, you know, five five new songs, one old one. Right. I know, um, speaking of that lineup change, um, this album obviously introduced Travis to the band as the singer um, to replace Nathan, which I noticed kind of brought a much heavier edge to the music that you were coming out with. Um, was that um, premeditated when you were going into the new record, like thinking it was going to be a, a little step up, like heavier wise in terms of the music? Yeah, before we got started writing, um, 
I was initially brought in to kind of produce and oversee the, the writing process. And one of the first things I asked was, what do you guys want to do? Because after Midheaven, it was hard to gauge what they wanted to do with the music. And everybody said they wanted to do something that's heavy and that's, you know, technical and complex and has the classical influence again. And uh, so in a way, I guess it's premeditated that we wanted it to be heavier, at least in the, you know, heavier than the last release. Um, but it's one of those things where for me as a musician, it's just that's part of being in a metal band is being heavy and that was the side of me that's that it's like okay let's let it be metal but then there's this classical side to me that wants counterpoint and you know a lot of melody and right. chromatic harmonies sure. so i guess those other things are perhaps more premeditated than the heaviness mm -hmm. the heaviness is just kind of fun and metal and inherent yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what I grew up listening to. So it's a little, it's it's a little more instinctive and just kind of like my my first language. Classical still, you know, I've only been doing it for four years at the most, and so it's still a language I'm getting used to. You know, it's like when when, uh, when somebody learns a language, they uh, they'll know the words and the phrases. But they'll go to the other country, and then the people make jokes, and they'll yeah. they'll use sarcasm, right. and we don't get it. We think they're serious or <laughs> something like that. And that's kind of how classical music is right now. I'm still learning the language. Sure. I'm still understanding the subtleties and nuances. Realizing that the stuff that you learned the first time around is that you thought was amazing is now like the basics. Right. Yeah. That's that's the incredible thing is you know I went into to music school having done the the very uh, you know fundamental elements of theory just doing some you know key signatures scales and that sort of stuff and i thought i was well prepared to go in and it would be okay and <laughs> we basically went through everything i knew about theory in two weeks and that was a huge wake up going like wow this is gonna get awesome <laughs> this is gonna get really cool because i've got two years left of this um and it was it was amazing till the end you know studying music that in depth uh it was just an incredible experience. Um, for I mean, you guys definitely have brought more of a progressive sound with uh, with Digital Veil. Um, for you personally, as you've been going to music school and as you were saying, like theory and that kind of thing, have bands like um, I mean, the, the primary two that I immediately think of and most people, metal fans, think of, I think, in terms of progressive and bands that are into theory are Tool and Meshuggah. Mm. Um, are those two bands that you like? or other bands similar to them, are they bands that you have looked at and like sort of studied in terms of theory? S somewhat. Uh, not Tool. I'm not a fan of Tool. Okay. Um, it's uh, not Meshuga, exactly for everybody. <laughs> right, right. Uh, on the other hand, Meshuggah is one of those bands where when I first listened to it, um, it took me a while. I, I, I liked the, the rhythmic aspects of it. Right. But there was a part of me that was, it was so used to hearing melody and harmony because that's you know how we're all kind of raised in rock music pop music and so there was that part of me that was expecting that and it, you never get i it just had the one. wrong perception of it you know or the wrong approach to listening to it and then studying uh classical music there's this whole movement that happened in the 21st century called minimalist mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. and it's very very much about stripping music down to its fundamental elements, rhythm, pitch, and you'll get a lot of repetition. But what ends up happening is through that repetition, even the slightest changes become these really profound moments in the music. And it could just be a small rhythmic thing, one note changes in the, in the harmony, and it's, it makes this huge impact. And so for me, Meshuggah is kind of the like the minimalist of metal and their rhythm is, is huge you know it's such a big component of it and for me it, it reminds me of how Steve Reich his music is very much based on rhythm specifically uh, you know the rhythmic stuff that he learned while studying uh, music in Ghana you know a lot of African I've rhythm. read a little bit about him yeah. yeah it's it's amazing so when I think of uh, Meshuggah I think minimalism it's, yeah it's just awesome brutal minimalism. Which is so interesting because all those guys are such incredible musicians but they're and they're playing music that it really is minimalist music but then you listen to it and you listen to like Thomas Hawk 
drum, like the drum that he, he what he's able to do with the drum set is just unreal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That guy is really one of the kind. <laughs> it makes me laugh, like, thinking about how much, it, like, the technical ability it takes to do that. But yeah. We can all geek on Meshuggah all we want. All yeah. Time, for sure. Um, kind of harping on the, uh, the classical element uh, one more time, I, just kind of like a random trivial note that um, people may not necessarily know about the band is that the, the name of the band, The Human Abstract, came from the William Blake poem, correct? Yeah. Was that kind of like um, kind of like a measure to like say we're kind of have those classical inf- like was that like you know at the really time it was out at the at the time it was we were looking for a band name, we were a local band. Um, and then actually when the name was first brought up, I wasn't that into it. I just didn't like the way it sounded, but of course William B- William Blake was, you know, an important poet in the lexicon of of literature and poetry, but uh, I don't know. It wasn't. We read the poem. The, we read the poem, and it it makes a lot of sense, and and I I like the the message of it. It's really awesome, but uh, but uh, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where if the band kind of builds the name. Um, and over the years, a band can make uh, a funny name or a bad name right, right. really cool. Um, and I'm not thinking of good examples of that now. But vice versa. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, a bad band could have a really cool name. That's true. And, and make and it just sound support. so yeah. bad. <laughs> but look, for instance, and I know this sounds dumb, but the band name Creed isn't that you know it's not a bad band name but when you think of creed exactly that's yeah. the response yeah. that it elicits is this laugh you think it's like just now creed is just the funniest <laughs> band name yeah i, I don't know <laughs> so. um well one more thing um about just to kind of finish our discussion on the newer material um the one critique that i because the reviews i've seen are pretty stellar that I've seen, that I've read so far. Um, but the one thing that people have critiqued is the length itself of the album. Um, being only eight songs, it comes in, I think, just under like 40 minutes or something like that. Um, was that deliberate in terms of like, we wanted to create quality over quantity? Did you have like more stuff yeah, written in, out initially? Or? In some way, there there's parts and there's, you know, even like half tracks that are just deleted and there's a lot of leftover stuff. But yeah, it, it was just a quality control thing and at the time I was studying (coughs) I was in my senior year of undergraduate studies preparing a solo classical guitar recital and all this other stuff going on so you know my time was separated into these different directions so uh, in a way it was limited because of the amount of time we were able to spend on it and also because of I guess my standards of what I wanted to put out there and everybody else's as well. So yeah, the length thing is, I, I've seen it brought up, but at the same time, it's a model that I want to use more for the future. Mm-hmm. You know, 30, 38, 40 minutes for a record isn't, that's not crazy to me. You look at the yeah. Beatles and they put out seven records in four years, sure, you know, sure. something like that. And they were 38, 40 minute records. Right and look what it did for them. Exactly. I mean, uh, they're the Beatles, so there's well, a lot yeah. more going <laughs> for them. Going but, there, but, <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I think that's a better model than, you know, 70 minutes and just trying to front load it and put it, I, I just don't see the point. And also, you know, the, the record felt pretty much complete yeah. because there's, there's this I idea that there's, that. there's pairs of tracks right. and it's, it's, um, it's not as obvious right away, but, uh, what I mean by there's pairs is Horizon to Zenith and Patterns are sure. a pair. Mm-hmm. They're both similar in that they're 6-8. Uh, they're sets of variations. Uh, the melodic presence mm-hmm. of it is is uh, is similar. Um, and then you look at Faust and Complex Terms, that's another pair. Uh, and then Holographic Sight and Digital Veil are the experimental tracks on the record holographic sight being whole tone scale mm. focusing more on the rhythmic elements uh in digital veil is octatonic scale focusing on the sonorities of that scale and sure. the rhythmic elements and so in a way those are a pair antebellum doesn't really have another 
song that yeah, is it's in a pair, but in it's it's seven and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. So in a way, it's that that center. So the middle of that song creates kind of the the symmetry for the the album. So it felt complete. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, and speaking of the uh, the future um, of the band, where you guys wanted to, you know. St- take the right step with this record um what exactly at least right now at this point in time is the future for the human abstract past this tour what are you guys planning on doing uh well we have this headlining tour in the works and uh yeah plan to do more touring and we really want to go overseas uh me especially because i've never been over there to tour or to travel or anything so as far as i know america uh is the only continent that exists North America, because I haven't seen the other ones. Yeah. Actually, no. We don't know. I think I'm I'm like living in the Truman Show, and uh, all this stuff has been made up. So, uh, yeah, I really want to go overseas and and get out out there. There's been a great response from overseas audiences. And it would be great to play there and explore and see what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, um, I think the last question that the whole world has been dying to know is how the fuck did you get those arms that you have in the video? <laughs> I don't know if it's the black tank top, but there's clearly some steroid usage going on. <laughs> uh, Explain yourself. <laughs> no, I don't, I, when we came back from recording, I was starting a master's program at USC. And, right, yeah. And all this stuff was going on and I don't know, there's like, you know, all this stuff with the band also preparing for touring and all that. And so I guess in a way it was kind of dealing with the stress, uh, was just working out, having something else. And also, you know, it it helps with performing, with playing, because you can relax uh, and it helps just relieve the stress. And then, you know, you can, you can immediately feel like you've got something done in the day if you wake up and work out, I guess. And so that would kind of to, like kickstart my day and sure. I I get obsessive with things so you know like diet changed and start working out on a strict schedule and for sure. uh, I don't know I guess that's just <laughs> how it happened but you know that's the first time I think in any you know anything related to the human abstract that I've ever worn something sleeveless <laughs> so, it, <laughs> so that's like the yeah I've always been hiding under jackets and Robes and snuggies, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe it was there the like whole time. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. Well, I, my immediate thought, and I told him, I was like, "Well, we got the next John Petrucci on our hands, <laughs> like, guns and shredding." So, for sure. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. AJ Minette from the Human Abstract. We're here on the Atticus Metal Tour. I'm of course Jack Attack, along with Vicious Mick, and we are Brutalitopia. Thanks a bunch, AJ. Of course. Take care, man. Bye.